Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Motorcast. This is your host, Dave. And I have on the line with me special guest, the legendary Les Jackson. How are you tonight, Les? How are you doing, Les? I didn't understand all that, Dave. I said I, ha I have on the line with me. On the line with me, I have the legendary Les Jackson. How are you? Uh, I, I was I was saying I have the legendary Les Jackson on the phone with me. I, I still don't give a damn. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I said I have the legendary Le, the legendary Les Jackson on the phone with me. Yes. How are I you? I don't know about legendary, but <laughs> <laughs> it is me. Well, you've been you've been in the drag racing for a long time now. And and now you now you have your son Keith drag racing the funny car. My son. Yeah, Keith. Now Keith is doing the drag racing. Yeah, he started driving in uh, I think it was eighty seven, and back in eighty five he went to work for some of the pro teams like uh, first of all Roland Leong, and then guy with the Hawaiian punch. Right. And then uh, Brad Tuttle with Nitro Bandit, uh, Eric Reed. Later on, he worked a little bit for John Force and uh, a real brief period with the leader. <laughs> and sometimes with uh, Bob Vandergriff. And I don't know, it seems like there were some others, but there's quite a few anyway. And then, and then, current currently, uh, he has the high heaven nostalgia funny car. Yes, he, he has that car. Which he he ran at the funny funny car chaos and did did pretty good at the funny car chaos. Yeah, he went down there to Denver, Texas last year, and uh, he was pretty good. Yeah, he did pretty good. Yeah, he's been doing pretty good recently, and he got, he won the B field down there. He also ran at the, uh, Funny Car Chaos at Havana, Illinois. I think that was in July. Yeah, that was the corn he, cornfields. And he, <laughs> I'm sorry? I said that was the cornfield one. When he, when he went into the corn... I said that was that, that was the one when he went into the cornfields. Uh, golly, I didn't catch that. I was saying ha ha nope. ha Havana is the event when he went into the cornfields. Yeah, that was Havana, Illinois. Yeah. And he, he ran a full flat on that run. That's the quickest he's ever gone. But the parachutes didn't open, so he... I had to take it into the cornfield. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds... Didn't do any damage to the car except the belly pan, and, and he made a new one of those before we went to the next race. Yeah. So, 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 so let's, let's talk a little bit about you, about you, Les. Okay. How, how, how did your whole uh, career begin in drag racing? Well, like I say, we... Me and my brother were drag racing our street cars and and stuff like that before, and then we really wanted to get into, you know, we, we didn't want to really be professional without a lot of money, but uh, we wanted to get into something more, more specialized, I guess you could say. So in 68, my brother Cal and I and another friend went out to the Winter Nationals in California, and we met Leon Fitzgerald out there of pure heaven and fame, and we hit it off with him pretty 
really good, and he's been a, a great friend ever since. And we really liked the fuel ordered cars, and after we saw him and Willie Borsch and some of those guys, we thought that's a class for us. So we had the Peak Brothers here in Denver build us the chassis in 1970. And we had to save our money between projects. So it took about a year for us to get that car on the track. And we started out as an A fuel alder, just an injected car. And uh, then the next year, in 72, uh, we put a blower on the car and uh, never looked back. Now, now how, how, many, how many years did that car run for? We ran the fuel alder, I think, about 10 years. And then we switched over to a funny car, a Vega funny car. So the, the funny car was uh, was nitro or alcohol? We, we went into the funny car in about 81, I believe. And it was still called High Heaven. Uh, while my brother drove. And then when he retired... And Pete took over within a year or so. He wanted to call Jackson Racing. So that's when the name changed. And now he's back to using the High Heaven name as a, as a tribute car for me and my late brother. So, so now with, 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 with the few altered uh, left, did you, were you pretty successful? all along. Uh, we won the fuel altered nationals in 1975 down in Tucson. And the next year we ran a 693 and that was a track record for Tucson. And then in the funny car, we primarily ran match races, but once in a while we'd do the mile high nationals. And then when Keith started driving, we did, uh, we've actually done quite a few national events. Haven't had a whole lot of success there. Although he did put Tony Pedregon on the trailer. I don't remember what year that was. Probably 2002, maybe. Out in, out at the, uh, oh geez, that, that one track in California. I can't think of the name of it offhand. Northern California up there around San Francisco. And and we've had really good success after that. Uh, I would guess that between the fuel altered and the funny car, we probably had about a, I don't know, I would guess about an 80% win and lose record, mainly at match races. Now, now, ha have you ever done any drag racing? You have you ever, have you driven? What was that again, Dave? I said, have you ever driven any of these cars? Uh, uh, I still didn't quite get that. I said, have you ever have you ever done any drag racing yourself? Uh, I just didn't understand you, Dave. I'm sorry. I, I, I was saying with the with the fuel altered or the funny car, did did you ever drive any of the two cars? Oh no, I never drove them. I never drove them at all. I just kind of fell into the role way back then as crew chief, and I, I liked that, and I just continued that way. And it always seemed kind of kind of. Uh, So now, when when you when you first uh, got into drag racing, were was were there any any people that were in, inspirational to you? What was the last part of that? Were were there any uh, people that were inspirational to you back in the day? Uh, 
Yeah, they still didn't catch it. I said, it was a tough time. Who, who, who were your biggest inspirations to get into drag racing? What made us get into drag racing? Uh, who, who, who were your biggest inspirations? Who inspired? Uh, I still, who in, I still didn't get them. Who inspired you? I, I still didn't understand. Uh, who were your biggest inspirations? Oh, biggest inspiration? Yeah. Well, we liked all kinds of drag racing, particularly top fuel. And at that time, for me and my brother, there there weren't any funny cars. The first funny car we saw was, I think, Gene Snow's at the, the Winter Nationals that year in 68. And... Uh, he had to run in comp limiter because he didn't have a class yet. But then we got to liking the fuel alters really well. And, of course, Leon Fitzgerald and and uh, Demas Satterley. Uh, who else? Uh, Johnny West used to come around when he was just a kid and ask me for advice on how to set up his car. And he was running the Chevrolet at the time, too, in the fuel altered. So we knew Johnny and Jimmy West really well. And, uh, of course, then we got to race with Dave Huff, and Dennis Geesler was a big influence. And then in Funny Cars, I suppose that uh, probably John Force was one of our biggest influence. Plus, Gary Dencham and his crew chief at the time, Richard Bays, and Richard himself really helped us out a lot over the years. And we sure appreciate that from him. Hope to see him next week at the California Hot Rod Reunion. So so now, Les, how, how, how would you compare drag racing back then to drag racing today? Well, it seems like it was a lot simpler, and it, and it really was mechanically. You just kind of more or less have to have a motor with the right fuel pump and magneto and things like that. And uh, But now you have to have the uh, computer and uh, and the big guys have that clutch management, which we had for a long time, too. But that just makes everything a lot more complicated. And those guys, uh, you know, like Rob Flynn and uh, Dean Antonelli and uh, Jimmy Proc and those guys, they're the ones that really know how to do that stuff. And, of course, there's always Austin Coyle and Dale Armstrong and, and uh, some of those other guys that have gone on. Yeah. And it costs a lot more money. Yeah. Yeah. So did... At the funny at funny car cast, did you did you talk to Dale Pody? I heard funny car chaos, but I didn't hear what you asked. Uh, I was saying, did you talk to Dale Pody at Funny Car Cast? Uh, I still didn't hear you, but we had a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun at those funny car chaos races, and uh, Chris and Tara Graves that run that little track down there. It's just eighth mile. Uh, they do a really good job and treated us really good. And the weather was good, except we got rained out on Friday. So we had one shot qualifying on Saturday. But that's okay. That was true for everybody. So we made the best of it and won the darn thing. Did Did, did you get to talk to Dale Pody? Did I what? Did you did you get to talk to Dale Pody? Uh, who was it you said? Dale Pody. Oh, Dale Pody? Yeah, did you talk to him at the Funny Car Cast? Yeah, uh, I said hi a couple of times, but we didn't get a chance to talk very much. The only chance we got to do that was on the start line, just before we ran. But we've also known him for a long time, and... And, in fact, he was driving for Joe Paisano when Joe passed away up here at the Mile High Nationals. I think that was back in 91. Yeah. 
Then I, I I know you you were hanging out with uh, De Deborah Owsley at the Funny Car Cast. And I, I, I know you, I know you were hanging around, hanging around with Deb, Deborah. Uh, that's people we mainly hung around in the pits. Although R.C. Williams came by and uh, Dave Settles, De we saw uh, Richard Tharp there, but we didn't get to talk to him either. I spent a lot of time with Deborah Housley, and and she recorded uh, quite an interview with me and she said part of that on Joe Wallace's show already. Hopefully she'll be able to put some of that on again. Yeah. I I I I saw I saw part of it. What was that? I said I, I, I saw part of it when Joe when Joe Walla was showing it but I, it was it was hard it was hard to hear it. I still didn't catch it. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Um. So now the 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 name the name High Heaven. How how did the name High he High Heaven come about? We were such good friends with Leon and Cal, and I were trying to decide what name to put on the car because everybody had a name on their car back then, and. uh so we we were such good friends with Leon, so we we thought we wanted to have heaven in it somehow. And my brother suggested, "Well, we're from the high country. Why don't we just call it High Heaven?" And that's what we did. So 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 it's, now it's, so, it's more or less a tribute to Rich Glasgow, who had the uh, uh, Pure Hill still has it. So now, so now, let less with with the fuel altered. Do you, do you remember the Do you remember the fastest time that the fuel altered ran? The quickest DT was that six ninety three that we ran in Tucson in seventy six, and the fastest speed we ran was a two twelve point seven six, I believe, and I believe that was at Ontario one time. When I got to run the fuel hauler over there. Now, now, are, are you are you, ex are you excited to go back to Funny Car Cast next year? Uh, yeah, he's planning on running uh, as many of those Funny Car Chaos races as he can, plus uh, a few match races in between if he can work it out. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Chris Graves is gonna he's gonna a add some more tracks on for next year. Uh, I know you said something about Chris Graves. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a good guy, and we we really enjoyed him. I I I, I was saying Chris Graves is gonna add some more tracks on for next year. Yeah, I, I think he's kind of behind the funny car chaos thing in the first place, so I, I'm pretty sure he was up at Havana when Keith went up there, too. 
I was a, I, what I'm saying he he's planning on adding some more uh some more tracks to next year's schedule. Did you say something about the technology? No, I said Chris Graves is gonna add some more tracks for next year. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be like eight or nine races next year. Yeah, whatever he can put together. Yeah, it, it it it's just it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. Yeah, he had four races last year. He had one in Amarillo, but uh, I think the reason we didn't go down there is we had we had a conflicting uh, event up there at Salt Lake City. So so now, Les, can you can you tell me uh, what what would you consider to be your uh, your fondest memory of your drag racing career? Well, there'd be a lot of them. Uh, one in that fuel order nationals in '75 was one uh, racing with my brother, and then with my son, and he started racing with me and my brother when he was seven years old. And then my grandson, Keith's son, Austin, uh, he's 20 years old now, but when he was driving junior dragsters, he won the uh, championship. I think it was a state championship, I believe, a couple of times. They even went over to Salt Lake one year, and he won that deal over there. And, and they, uh, uh, what did they get? They got, they got a really good prize from JR race car. I think it was an engine. No, it wasn't either. It was a race car. It was a chassis. So they, that was a good moment. But for me, uh, the best part about racing is all the wonderful people that we've met over the years. And most of them are, are true friends. And I really enjoy them. And that's one of the main reasons I go out to the California Hot Rod Reunion to see those guys and, and uh, a lot of them only see once a year if I go every year. So that means a lot to me. Yeah, dra dra drag racing is just one big family. Yes, it is. It is like a family. I can go out to that hot rod reunion and, and go around the different pits and, and they feed me lunch every day, all three days. <laughs> Yeah, Troy you... Glenn, Troy Glenn, who had him and Cheryl Glenn have the Schultz and Glenn, which was driven by uh, Jerry Glenn, and they're not related. Uh, he has uh, their cackle car, and he's become a very good friend. I really like Cheryl and and, uh, and uh, Troy. So you. He... You you never have to worry about uh, being hungry at the track. I didn't understand that either. I said you 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 never have to worry about being hungry at the track. Uh, favorite track? Nah, I said you you never have to worry about being hungry at the track. Uh, I'm catching most of that, but not the exact. Question. I said, for for you, you never have to worry about being hungry while you're at the track. In the old days at the track. I said, you never have to worry about being hungry. I still didn't get that either. I remember a lot of people on a lot of tracks. Randy Renew, who has... Red shirt or uh, red, yeah, yeah, red, red line shirt. Red, is it red line? Yeah, red line. Shirt club, yeah. He used to run the track in El Paso, and, and we know him fairly well. He he hired us in down there a few times. Yeah, R R R Randy's a really good guy. We used to race on some pretty pretty marginal tracks, but uh, I'd say the. Most of the NHRA tracks are the best. Uh, Band of Mares is probably one of the best in, in the country. Its only problem is that 
What do you think about eighth eighth mile drag racing? About what in racing? No. What do you think about eight, eighth mile drag racing? Well, we've been doing that quite a bit uh, with the funny car chaos that they have, and uh, in fact, over at Salt Lake this summer, the wind was so bad the first run we only got to run eighth mile, and the second run we ran quarter mile. But we never did really like the eighth mile tracks prior, but but they're okay. And if that's what we got to race on, that's what we race on. And of course, down there at uh, Denton, there was guys like Ronnie Young with the Blue Max and John Hale with the, uh, what do they call that, the uh, Tough Texan? Uh, bad Texan, something like that. Yeah, Bad Texan. <laughs> And a lot of other new new guys. I met a lot of new guys down there. Keith already knew a lot of those. But uh, there's also the uh, Stringer family out of Alamogordo, New Mexico, and their son has a uh, nostalgia funny car with a blown Chevy engine in it. And I've known those folks for quite a while, and, and they do a really good job. And it's fun to be around them too. Yeah, and you had uh, Lyle Greenberg. What was that again? And Lyle Greenberg from New Mexico. Lyle Greenberg? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend. He was down there at Denton, but he had some trouble and engine trouble and never got on the racetrack. But uh, he was there and he was raring to go. Then he had uh, Nancy Matter. What was that one? N Nancy. Nancy Matter. I still didn't catch that. Nancy Matter. Uh, I'm just I'm just having trouble deciphering, and it's my fault. It's not uh, yours. That's, that's okay. N N Nancy Matter. Uh, I probably should have Keith in here uh, being my uh, interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said Nancy Matter. Boy, I just am not catching the last part of that. Try just a little bit slower. All right. Nancy Matter. 200? No, Na Nancy Matter. I still don't understand it, Dave. That's yeah, okay. How about now? Nancy Matter. Uh, was that Angie? Nancy. N N A N C Y. No, N A N C Y. Oh, Nancy Matter? Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I didn't meet her even down there at Denton this time for a reason. And of course, uh, Poot is her coochie. Exactly. But uh, uh, Keith knows her pretty well. 
he knows a lot of those people that, that he met when he was working with those pro guys that, that I didn't get to meet. I met a lot of them, but not some of them I didn't. Well, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure next year you'll meet, meet all these people. Yeah, we know a lot of people, um, a lot of racers are friends on Facebook. And of course, like I say, a lot of them are friends uh, for, uh, for real, I guess you'd say. And uh, that's what's nice about drag racing is, is all the friendships. Exactly. No. And it, it, you know, that's... I know a lot of from El Paso. Are you from down there? El Paso, Texas? Yeah. No, I'm 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 in I'm in Illinois. Okay. Uh there was some guys like the Leon Ruddick and uh Billy Graham and he's not a preacher by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, there, there's a lot more that I can't think of offhand but So now, yeah, ne ne next, I would say ne next year for Funny Car Chaos, you'll probably get to meet a lot more people. Yeah, uh, like, like I say, we've been around a lot of people, and and uh, hopefully they'll all be around again next year, and we're looking forward to racing with a lot of them and seeing a lot more at the races. Yeah, dra dra drag drag racing is a great sport. What was that again? I said drag racing is a great sport. A uh, driver of the bunch? No. Drag drag racing is a great sport. Uh yes, they are. Most drag racers are the best. I have to agree with you on that one. Well, I probably should mention the mob in there too, because we ran them a lot. And especially, well, we we made kind of a tour with them for most of those ten years. Dave Huff and Dennis Kaiser and Leon Fitzgerald, and Johnny and Jimmy West, and uh, Jim Miles and Bill Frontuto with Black Magic. Rod Hines drove that car for a while after Bill got hurt. And, uh, Trello Brothers. Some guys came from back east. Uh, ben Pettinato was there as a little kid with his dad, and they, they had the same name on their car when we saw it. It was an injected Hemi that ran like Jack the Bear. And his dad's name was, uh, Oh, shoot, now I can't think of his first name, but anyway, it, it was Dan Petronato's dad. And they called it the uh, uh, Rat Poison. Oh, and of course, there was Don Green. Don Green actually owned the Rat Trap back when we were racing, so we got to know him really well. At that time, his wife, uh, uh, she was married. <laughs> to uh, Bill Summers of the Summer Brothers prior to that. And, uh, oh, I got that backwards. She was married to to Don Green with the Rat Trap, and then she got married to Bill Summers. And they have a daughter, and her name is Maggie Green Summers Peace. And she's on Facebook, and she's a great kid. She isn't a kid anymore, but she is to me. And uh, there, there's just a bunch of them. So, uh, how, how many grandchildren do you have, Les? I didn't catch that either. Okay. How, how many grandkids do you have? How many grand, grandkids? Yes. I've got, uh, oh, grandkids, I've got, uh, let's see, uh, 
Now, 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 do 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 they all like drag racing? Uh, they all, a lot of them like it pretty well. Uh, so many of them didn't uh, get to be exposed to it as much. They moved, their parents moved away, or they moved away somewhere. And uh, um, my two oldest, or I should say, three oldest, they were pretty interested. In fact. Uh, my oldest grandson, his name is Brandon. He worked with Keith on the funny cars for quite a while. And that was back uh, when uh, Keith and, and Joe Odessa had the J4 racing big show car. Now, now you, you know Paul Rivera, right? I said, you, you know Paul Rivera, right? I still didn't get that. Paul Rivera? I'm sorry, I just don't, don't catch it, Dave. I said, Paul Rivera. Rivera? Yeah, Paul. Paul Rivera? Yeah. Yeah, I've known him for a long time. I met him at some... Uh, speed shops, uh, Yearwood Speed and Custom down in El Paso. When I was calling on customers down there, and and uh, he even came up here and lived with me for a little while. And then he hung around up here, and then and then he went back to El Paso and over to Dallas, and now he's back in El Paso. So hi, Paul, if you're listening in. Yes, he's he's listening. He 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 said you're an icon. <laughs> Yeah, he called you an icon. Did you understand that, Les? No, I didn't. I said Paul Paul Rivera said you're an you're an icon. I'm an icon. Yes. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I'm like, just an old boy. I'm just an old guy that likes drag racing. Icons like a legend. <laughs> Uh, like a, I, legend, uh, a legend in my own mind. <laughs> You're a legendary guy guy in the sport of drag racing. Well, we had a lot of fun with all them guys down there, didn't we? You just make year, years and years and years and years of memories. Yeah. Yeah. And you traveled around with us quite a bit, too. And hopefully... Hopefully it'll be years and years and years and more memories for you guys. Yeah. That one picture you posted uh, a while back on Facebook is taken in front of Bruce Hexted. No, it wasn't Bruce's shop. It was Howard Corwin's shop over there on Allison Street in Lakewood when, when the car wasn't even finished yet. I think it had the motor and the body mount, and that was about it. And then there you stood. <laughs> Yeah, like like you like you said, drag racing is just a whole family atmosphere. Yep, it sure is. Yeah, yeah. it's even better at at the races like the funny car cows because we don't rope our pits off like they do in the big show, and they have to do that because there's already so many crew members in there and other dignitaries. <laughs> And uh, they just can't have people wandering in there willy nilly, you know. So I should point out that we have a couple of really good friends. Uh, I already named uh, a couple of them with uh, Rob Flynn, but uh, another guy who was a kid racing with his dad and a few older down there at Tucson is uh, Dean Antonelli, and at this present time, he's Jack Beckman's crew chief. And uh, back then, uh, uh, Joe Antonelli 
Yep, many, many years. Yeah. Well, well, Les. Uh, well, well, Les. I, w- I want to thank you very much for uh, taking time tonight to do an interview with me. Yeah. Well, there sure were a lot of memories. Yeah. I w- I want to thank you very much for doing an interview with me tonight. Now, do you do you have any final final words to say? You want to say thank you to anybody li- that might be listening? Okay. You want to you want to say any thank yous out to anybody out there? Um, I didn't catch that. I said, would you like to thank anybody out there listening? Anybody else? What? Anybody who's li- listening to the interview, you want to say thank you to anybody? Dave, not Paul. Uh, I was saying, um, do, would you like to uh, thank thank anybody? My grandsons. Now, would you, would you like to say thank you to anybody listening? Uh, do you want to hear their names? I said, do you, do you have any final words or thank yous? I, I still don't understand. Do you have any final words or thank yous? Uh, I just can't. Get... Oh, no. Do Do you have any final words or thank yous you want to give out? For my grandkids. No, 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 no. I said, do you have any final words you want to say or any thank yous you want to say? Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Les, and I, I hope you have a great night. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye.